Thank you for downloading the Friday Night Comedy Podcast from Radio 4. To find out more, visit bbc.co.uk slash radio4. Hello, you're listening to Today with me, John Humphreys. And me, Sarah Montague. The results of the EU referendum are in, and it was a very good night for anyone who starts every conversation in the pub with, I'm not a racist, but... (laughs) We can now go to Boris Johnson for his first reaction to the Leave victory. After his humiliating defeat, David Cameron resigned as Prime Minister, saying he'd fought the campaign in the only way he knew how. Badly. (laughs) The final result was 52-48, which was also Farage's blood alcohol reading by the end of the evening. There was astonishment that for once the whole country had managed to get out of Europe before our football teams did. And there's speculation that the UK Independence Party will now be wound up, since, of course, there's not going to be a United Kingdom for much longer. (laughs) Scotland voted overwhelmingly in favour of the Union. Nicola Sturgeon joins us. This is a very big mistake. (laughs) Voting to go alone outside the safety net of a larger union. Total folly. (laughs) That's why we're going to use this calamitous vote to press ahead with a second Scottish referendum vote so we can free ourselves of the straitjacket of a larger union and thrive as an independent country. (laughs) Yes, I know it's all jingoistic nonsense, but that seems to be the thing that works these days. Good morning, everyone. I fought this campaign as I always have done, by saying what I wanted and then assuming that I'll get it just because I've said I wanted it. (laughs) I have been absolutely clear in my belief that I am an astute politician and a born leader because they always told me that I was at school. But I now realise that I am, in fact, one of the great asses of history. (laughs) You see, I only agreed to this referendum because it never occurred to me that I might lose. That's the sort of arrogant, entitled bellend I really am. Hello, Sally Burko's phone. Sally, it's John. John? Your husband, John Burko. Oh, yes, 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 that one. Hi, hi. Look, I've tried and tried. I can't do it. Oh, you can. Try again. Order! Order! The questions for the government, the Prime Minister, Boris... <laughs> no. No, come on, John. Come on, John. Strap on a pair. You know, you can say it without gagging. Prime Minister Boris... <laughs> I'm, I'm a professional. I have to do this. The Prime Minister, Boris Johnson... Oh, I was so close. <laughs> I'm Nigel Farage. No, 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 let me gloat. (laughs) Welcome to my official Brexit Victory podcast. So, there we go. I've won politics. Britain has voted to leave the EU, and quite rightly, I'm taking all the credit. The people have spoken, and what they've said is that they love me. Nigel Herbert Farage, a true people's politician. Finally, a Nelson Mandela for the Whites. (laughs) I knew Vote Leave were going to win because these last few months, everywhere I've gone, people have shouted, Leave! (laughs) Often followed by eggs of support. (laughs) As a now legitimate politician with a widespread appeal, I decided to book this town hall for my victory Q&A, followed by a G and (laughs) T. Followed by a G and G, because why spoil your lovely G with all that T? So, I'm joined here by an audience of my, no doubt, deliriously happy supporters. Let's take a question. Yes, you, sir. 
You said this referendum was about us taking back control. That's right. So does that mean that I now can go within 100 yards of my ex-wife? <laughs> no, 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 of course not. Oh, what? Look, can we just get a proper political question, please? Uh, Nigel, I want to ask you about political freedom. Oh, thank you. Go ahead. Will I finally be allowed to marry my goat? Oh, no! <laughs> no, what was the point of the whole thing, then? I... Yeah, you said we'd be a free country. I want us to get rid of all the foreigners. Now, you see, that's exactly the kind of salty, down-to-earth comment that honest, decent people like you are now allowed to make. And lock up the queers. Ah, oh, now you can't say that. <laughs> you told me if we left the EU, my hair would grow back. But I'm still bald. He said it'd make Britain great again, but I just had a pint of Green King IPA and it was still disgusting. <laughs> let's get him! Yeah, come on, let's get him, let's get him, come on. Oh, God, what have I done? I've unleashed hell. Play the theme tune! <laughs> Hello and welcome to the BBC's EU referendum coverage. It's ten o'clock and that means that we can now tell you absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> There's no exit poll and you won't get any results for ours, but we'll keep trying to make it sound dramatic and we certainly don't use that word too lightly. There is a dramatic late poll in from YouGov, but as they're genuinely less reliable than Otto the Octopus, <laughs> we've decided to use it to mop the off-putting sweat from Ian Duncan Smith's head. <laughs> Laura Kuzba. And don't forget that election coverage is available with subtitles for the deaf, audio description for the blind, and ITV for the thick. <laughs> We go over to Jeremy Vine, trying his hardest to make two numbers sound interesting. <laughs> wow, here I am in a CGI Downing Street, <laughs> prancing about like a non-threatening Fred Talbot. <laughs> well, it's a complicated system, but stick with me. This giant blue helter skelter represents the boroughs which might potentially vote either leave or remain. And these hundreds of tiny yellow velociraptors. They're representative of the number of people living in the voting centres who may or may not have voted. I've got a scale, oh, with the most xenophobic places at one end and the smuggest at the other, just to make everyone feel uncomfortable. And as this luminous blue and yellow zebra indicates, if more than 50% of voters choose leave, we'll leave. <laughs> right, shut up, losers. Donald is speaking now, and when Donald is speaking, your job as reporters is to nod and say, Donald, you're doing a great job. A great job. I arrive here in your wonderful country to see on every TV screen a politician who has whipped up hysterical hatred of immigrants to score a seismic political victory that's horrified the establishments, horrified them, and sent your economy into total free fall. Well, all I can say is thank you for making me feel so at home. <laughs> You've gone beyond my expectations. Well, in the spirit of cooperation, I have this day offered Prime Minister Borat Johnson my help. <laughs> Thank you. In rebuilding the wall between England and Scotland that was so rashly knocked down in the recent past. <laughs> and if he needs help in managing the UK economy post-Brexit, I can help. I can help. I've done a lot of bankruptcies. Trust me. Hello there. I'm Penelope Wilton, Hannah Gordon without the edge. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I think the last couple of months have been simply dreadful. During this referendum campaign, we've all got decidedly het up and rather overtired. We're a nation divided, which is why dear old Auntie Beebe is bringing you a week of programmes to calm the nerves and soothe the soul. Hello and welcome to the Moral Maze. This week we ask the question, are biscuits nice? <laughs> Melanie Phillips. Now, you see, I take the view that biscuits are extremely nice. Michael Portillo. Well, I actually visited a biscuit factory on one of my train programmes, so I can confirm biscuits are really nice. Well, that's that sorted. Goodbye. <laughs> yes, it's things we can all agree on season on the BBC. Across radio and TV, we'll be examining a range of comfortingly uncontroversial ideas, like you can never have too many scarves, Tea tastes better out of a teapot. The problem with Arsenal is they try to walk the ball into the net. <laughs> and Bono is somewhat full of himself. <laughs> There'll be a special edition of Panorama. 
Oh, hello, don't worry. It's not that awful shouty man from Eggheads. It's me, Alan. On Panorama tonight, we take an in-depth look at Britain's policemen. Do they really look younger these days? Things we can all agree on, Week, will be just fine. <laughs> so, with the time coming up to 4am, I've chugged my 12th Pro Plus and have been busting for a pee for the last hour and a half. <laughs> on the markets, the pound that yesterday would have got to $1.60 is now worth three coconuts and a pineapple. <laughs> I must be hallucinating because I'm joined now by what seems to be a cat hairball. But from my notes is actually Boris Johnson. <laughs> this vote was rotten, I tell you. A flagrant stitch-up worse than the Battle of Thermopylae, where Leonides and his Spartans were routed by the Greeks. <laughs> we were robbed, I tell you. But, Boris, you've won. Wait, really? what? You won. <laughs> Leave won. We won. We. What, me? Gove, IDS, that bug-eyed loon Farage with his breaking point poster. Seriously, we won. The public wanted to give the elite a kicking, so they voted with you guys. They, they, they wanted to give the elite a kicking, so they voted for me. <laughs> that's 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 like being angry at bees, so you stick your head in a wasp's nest. I mean, are they totally insane? Uh, Boris, it's almost as if you didn't want to win. Well, of course I didn't want to win. Everybody loves Boris when I don't actually do anything. I, 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 I just bumble about, get caught on zip wires and generally play the silly buffoon. But as my time as London Mayor showed, me running things and doing actual real politics is like putting a blancmange in a wind tunnel. Very messy. But, Boris, you do have a plan, don't you? you know, what to do next? The markets are in free fall. Ah, a plan. Yes, hang on, wait. Oh, I, 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 I'm... I'm I'm sure Farage wrote one down. Uh, ah, yes, here it is. <laughs> On the back of a fag packet. Uh, what does it say? Uh, uh, some, something about a, a magical horse made of cheese. Uh, uh, damn, we'd had quite a few drinks by this stage. Well, <laughs> so what do we do now the country is in a state of emergency? I've got it. Relax. Crisis over. We'll hold a referendum. <laughs> one on joining the EU. <laughs> Aren't you lucky to have Boris around running the show? <laughs> Goodbye, number ten. <laughs> Though I never really earned the keys, I must go now. Yes, I know. Can you believe? The great unwashed have spoken. <laughs> they think we're better, insular, divided, Scarred and broken, and it's my fault, so I must leave. For it seems to me they want to be like an island in the wind. Not a friend in sight to pick us up when our chips are down. And while fists are raised and flags fly over England's greenest hills, the sight of Farage smiling is the bitterest of pills <laughs> and while it may be me who got us into all this bloody grief i can't be asked to fix it <laughs> so i'm off to tenere <laughs> hello i'm john snow none of us have slept this is my third red bull and my eyes are being held open with sellotape. <laughs> I'm joined now by Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn. Now, Jeremy, your critics would say that you didn't do enough for the campaign. Well, that is patently ridiculous. I answered at least three questions on the subject. I went on TV wearing an EU badge. What more could I have done? Oh, well, you, you could have campaigned on a bus tour. You could have debated the Leave campaign. But I really think that you are underestimating just how impressive the badge I wore was. It had <laughs> bits of blue on it. Blue, John. Do you know how hard that was for me to wear? It's left a rash on my skin. <laughs> you also started campaigning quite late. Well, I was busy doing more important things. I found out recipes were being deleted off the BBC website. <laughs> so I had to make sure I had bookmarked my favourite zucchini moussaka. <laughs> I mean, now just hearing the two Labour MPs have tabled a motion of no confidence in you, does that come as a shock? 
not really, seeing as I'm one of them. <laughs> You've reached the voicemail of David Cameron. Leave a message or, you know, don't, whatever. <laughs> Hello, uh, Monsieur Cameron, is uh, President Hollande. <laughs> Sacre bleu, we've heard the news. Uh, I just wanted to say we are... <laughs> <laughs> so, so sorry that you will be leaving us. <laughs> it honestly will not be the same without you. I cannot tell you how much we'll miss your endless enthusiasm, your love of all things European, uh, not to mention the delicious English wine you send to me every Christmas. <laughs> Such a terrible shame, honestly. People of Britain, I speak to you on a momentous day for our country. Britain has done one, and <laughs> you may be in need of some reassurance. We've lost someone whose service to this country was above and beyond the call of duty. One's as gutted as you are that Sinita has left Celebrity Mastership. <laughs> oh, and Bloaty McPoshface has resigned. So now there'll be a new person running Britain. And that person is me. Yes, your queen is seizing control. You didn't really think I'd let Farage and Boris take charge, did you? What do you think this is, an episode of Tales of the Unexpected? <laughs> change for you, having shaken off the shackles of the EU, to be told what to do by an unelected bunch of Germans enjoying a gravy train at the taxpayer's expense. <laughs> All right, I'm professional underwear model and Remain campaigner David Beckham. <laughs> Me and some of the other famous people have got together for this webcast. We told you to vote Remain and today as the country wakes up to an unsure future, we're here to ask, why didn't you listen? We're celebrities, how dare you? <laughs> Myself, Rio, and fellow members of the World Cup 2006 squad are stunned and offended that you chose to ignore me and Gary Neville's advice over the economic future of our country. <laughs> Hello, I'm Paloma Faith. <laughs> And I'm, like, so amazed that you didn't take the advice about the long-term safety of your country from a one-time Brit winner who always wears colourful lipstick. <laughs> what on earth happened? I mean, didn't you hear me? Why do you think I talk this slowly? Paloma's right. I'm Bill Nye. But it only takes a second to consider our credentials. You listen to Nigel Farage, but let me ask you, how many of the best exotic Marigold Hotel movies was he in? <laughs> Maybe the second one, to be honest. I haven't seen it. But uh, still, I was in uh, two, probably. And uh, we celebrities are shocked. <laughs> So if you people continue to ignore celebrities' advice on the geopolitical climate, then I sincerely worry that in the future there may no longer be a celebrity there to half understand an issue so you don't have to. <laughs> Hello. You've reached the offices of 10 Downing Street. I'm not here at the moment. Uh, I might be giving a short speech outside. Uh, please leave a message after the beep. David, it's, it's Barack. Now, this might not be the best time to bring this up, but I gotta say this, you still owe me for that last minute flight over to the UK during the campaign. <laughs> uh, looking at it, it's uh, $200,000, which I think roughly translates to one million pounds sterling. <laughs> No rush, really. Just whenever you're not too busy with work, which I suspect will be very soon. <laughs> now, throughout today's count, there has been controversy online amongst Leave voters not wanting to use the pencils supplied at polling stations for fears of vote tampering. Laura Koonsberg. Yes, David, I have here the sinister brains behind these rumours, Michael Parkinson. 
Uh, very good morning, my dear. <laughs> I, 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 I enjoy getting interviewed for a change. Uh, would you like an anecdote? No, uh, I just want to know why you spread these rumours. Well, well I mean, it's very, very, very simple. Uh, by cooking up some cock and bull internet rumour that MI5 were going to rub out all the votes cast in pencil, uh, there was suddenly a huge demand for my Parker pens. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Welcome to the England Twining Base here in Chantilly, <laughs> chosen ahead of Paris, Rennes and La Rochelle, <laughs> because I feel more comfortable sleeping somewhere I can pronounce. <laughs> this week's draw for the round of 16 has pitted us against Iceland in what can only be described as a David and Goliath battle. And I'm currently trying to think of a way we can beat Goliath. <laughs> sure, they share one pair of football boots between 23. And sure, their national motto is, it's not even a taking part that counts, it's just being in the vicinity. <laughs> sure, they faint immediately if it's hotter than minus 12. <laughs> and they play in skis. And their goalie's a snowman. <laughs> and, and, and their manager's an igloo. But... <laughs> This is England we're talking about. I predict another thrilling goalless draw, <laughs> followed by a brave and unfortunate defeat on penalties. <laughs> and what I'm telling my players is that if we can nearly beat Russia and Slovakia, then we can nearly beat Iceland too. <laughs> Thank you. Hello? Hello, Prime Minister. I've got Tony Blair on the line. Oh, uh, right. Will you accept the call? He wants to reverse the charges. <laughs> uh, I, I suppose so. Yeah, hi. Uh, David, um, you know, it's Tony here. Um, sorry, uh, hope you understand. Uh, times are tough. I'm down to my last 140 million Iraqi dinar. <laughs> I see. David, you must be feeling a bit lost, but, you know, I think I can help. Have you thought about... You know, what you want to do now? Uh, well, I'm, I'm hoping I can stay in my normal routine, you know, uh, a bit of swing ball, uh, watching Peppa Pig with the curtains closed, <laughs> that sort of thing, yeah. Have you ever thought about a career in Middle Eastern peace envoy? <laughs> now, we'll all get your CV together, get you a coffee date with Ahmadinejad, and, you know, Bob's your uncle. Oh, uh, right, sounds great. Great, I'll send you the invoice right away. Uh, invoice? Yeah, my consultancy fee. Cherie's set her heart on a stealth jet. Long story. Tutty bye. Good morning, everyone. I'm Tim Farron. <laughs> I'm very proud of the time I've spent leading the Liberal Democrats and of the great things we've achieved, from updating our website colour scheme <laughs> right through to the change of our weekly meeting times from 5pm to 6 <laughs> But like the Prime Minister, I no longer feel I am right to captain this boat. I fought hard for us to remain, but the British people have voted to leave. And so, obviously, there would be tremendous uproar if I remained leader. This morning, I spoke to other European politicians, and to those whose secretaries answered the phone... <laughs> I explained that I would be staying on until October when a new leader can be elected in the traditional Lib Dem manner by looking through our calendars to see who has the least on. <laughs> uh, uh, no, 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 let me slur. <laughs> <sighs> Welcome back to my Victory Podcast. After all the kerfuffle last time, we've had to have a drinks break. Yeah. <laughs> a few drinks breaks, actually, because nothing I can't handle. Uh, wait, where is everyone? They've all gone. Carswell! Where's everybody gone? Carswell? They must have gone too. Bugger it. That's fine. That's great. I don't need any of you. That's why I voted leave in the first place. <laughs> it's Independence Day, and I'm the one who gets to be independent. Me, just me, in my shed, with my magazines. <laughs> 23 years in UKIP, and finally I'm alone. I'm better off alone, Mummy always said. I'm terrified of human contact because Papa never hugged me. Nobody ever loved me, you know? That's why I'm scared of everyone but myself. I'm just a scared little boy cowering under his top gear duvet. 
crying over the childhood I never had. Is that what you all wanted to hear, is it? Where are you now, mummy? Where are you now to say you're proud of Nigel? Will you put my pictures on the fridge now, mummy? Oh, what have you drawn, Nigel? It's the dark, lonely void in my soul! <laughs> oh, well, never mind. Come on, let's go to the dog and duck, shall we? Mine's a Singapore sling, by which I mean I'll sling all the Asians out the pub so I can enjoy my London pride and peace. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Today. One of the first celebrities to come out against Brexit was the singer Paloma Faith, who I've never heard of. <laughs> she joins us now. Hi, John, you big cuddly, wuddly, grumpy pants. You're like a bear that hasn't had its breakfast. <laughs> uh, Paloma, you must be devastated by the leave win. Do you know, words can't really express how I feel. But a song might. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> Probably pissed Who get the keys To number ten A blonde buffoon In Thatcher's den Prime Minister Boris Makes me tremble If Michael Gove Controlled the nation I'd fly my kite Near a power station Only leave Only leave can hurt life Performed by John Coleshaw, Lewis McLeod, Jan Ravens, Deborah Stevenson, and Duncan Wisby. The writers were Niv Fountain and Tom Jameson, Lawrence Howard, Ed Amsden, and Tom Coles, James Bug, Laura Major, Sarah Campbell, Max Davis, Jack Bernhard, and Liam Burr. The producer and creator was Bill Dare, and it was a BBC Studios production. To listen again to any of our comedies on Radio 4, please go to bbc.co.uk/slash radio4/slash comedy.